Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about specifically about double declining balance depreciation method. So double declining balance is a little bit different from the other methods that we've talked about. The first step is to calculate the rate. And double declining balance is actually two times the straight line rate. So if you'll recall, the straight line rate was one divided by the useful life of the asset. So double declining balance rate will be one divided by the useful life and all that multiplied times two. So technically it's two over the useful life in years of the asset. Once you have the rate calculated, you then use the rate to calculate the depreciation expense. By taking the double declining balance rate and multiplying it times the beginning period book value. Now, recall with straight line, we multiplied the rate times the cost. And in this case, we're multiplying it by the beginning period book value. So we have to remember how to calculate that. Also, one thing we should note about double declining balance is it ignores residual value. And double declining balance is most appropriate for assets that produce the most revenues in the earlier years of its life because the earlier years will have the most depreciation expense under double declining balance. So let's look at an example using double declining balance. Pulley bone fried chicken bought equipment on January the 2nd for $15,000. The equipment was expected to remain in service for four years and to perform 3,000 fry jobs. At the end of the equipment's useful life, Pulley Bone estimates that its residual value will be $3,000. The equipment performed 300 jobs for the first year, 900 jobs the second year, 1,200 jobs the third year, and 600 jobs the fourth year. Prepare a schedule of depreciation expense per year for the equipment under, under the double declining balance method. After two years under double declining balance depreciation, the company switched to the straight line method. Now, for right now, let's ignore that last sentence. Also, some of that information in there you'll remember we used in the units of production method of depreciation, which is not really needed in the double declining balance method. <clears throat> so the first thing we have to do is to calculate the rate. So remember, it's two times the straight line rate, which is one over the useful life of the asset. So in this case, um, the useful life of the asset is four years, so one over four times two, which is one half, or 50%. So in year one, we're going to take our rate of 50% or 0.5 and multiply it times the beginning period book value. Remember, it ignores residual value. So we haven't depreciated this asset at all in the first year. So the book value will be whatever the cost is in the first year. So 15,000 times 50% gives us depreciation expense in the first year of 7,500. As this is the first year of depreciation, total accumulated depreciation would then be the 7,500. And the year in book value then would be one half of its uh, cost because we depreciated half of it in the first year, so $7,500. We would continue to do that. So in, year, in the second year of its life, we would take 50% of its book value. Well, the book value from 2006 was 7,500. So 50% of 7,500 is 3,750. And to get our total accumulated depreciation, it would be the 7500 that we expensed in the first year plus the 3750 we expensed in the second year to give us total accumulated depreciation of $11,250, bringing our year in book value in the second year to only $3,750. So again, we started out with $15,000, and now we've depreciated a total of $11,250. So our year in book value at the end of year two would be $3,750. Now, in year three, we're going to continue to do the same thing. It's 50% of the beginning book value. Well, the beginning book value in 2008 was $3,750, the ending book value from the prior year. 
So 50% of 3750 is $1,875 in depreciation expense. However, keep in mind, we did have a residual value or salvage value of $3,000 for this asset that we're expecting. So we don't want to depreciate it below that $3,000. So if we take a total of $1,875 in depreciation expense in the third year, it's going to depreciate this asset below $3,000. Therefore, we don't want to do that. So the max amount of depreciation expense that we can take in the third year is $750, which would bring us to a total accumulated depreciation of $12,000, giving us a, a book value at the end of the third year of $3,000. Therefore, in the fourth year, there would be no depreciation expense possible. So let's talk about this last line of this problem. After two years, under double declining balance depreciation, the company switched to the straight line method. Now, some companies do that, so it eliminates the need to use a plug figure for depreciation in the last year or the next to last year or however many years it, it takes. So what happens is, just like the problem states, in the next to the last year of an asset's useful life, a company would switch from double declining balance to the straight line method. So let's take a look at what that would look like with this current problem. All right, so here is what we did in the, in the first part of it, the first two years, exactly the same thing. But now we're in the next to the last year of the asset's useful life. So now we're going to switch to the straight line method. Now remember, the straight line method takes into account residual value. So to calculate straight line for the next to the last year, we would take the current book value of 3750 we would subtract the residual value of $3,000, and remember this is straight line now, and we only think there's two years left in its useful life. So we're going to divide that by two to get depreciation expense per year of $375. That gives us a total accumulated depreciation at the end of the third year of $11,625. So now our year-end book value at the end of year three is $3,375. Now remember, again, under straight line, we expense in depreciation the same amount each year. So in the fourth year, we're also going to expense $375, which brings us a total accumulated depreciation of $12,000 and gives us a year-end book value at the end of its useful life of $3,000, which is exactly what we wanted because we said the residual value of the asset was $3,000.